But when it becomes this thing where, well, I need to get this, that, and that prayer, and, and this and that, and I need to pray this protection against this, this certain spirit with that and that name, and this spirit the other day, and, and I need to... No, like, God knows. Like many of you, I grew up in a church which did not really consider Satan and his entities, demons, as a topic that was ever discussed. In fact, the idea that Jesus casted out demons was real, but I never considered that they could still be around today and influence the world around us all. In fact, just look at the world and you could probably deduct that. But then when we start investigating more, reading the Bible for ourselves, recognizing the reality of these things where believers are even called to cast out demons, which is like, wow, he says, I'm giving you authority over all the works of the devil and nothing shall hurt you. Greater is he that's in you than he who's in the world. We are now faced with this reality that they exist, but that's kind of scary for many people. In fact, the background to all of this is that many of us got introduced to the world's reality and story regarding demons before we got introduced to the biblical understanding. So many of us have baggage from horror movies, books, whatever we, things we've read and consumed in entertainment in this world. And that's how we see all of these things. By So it leaves us with really the intent of all of these contents, and that is to put fear in you, to scare you, because while well, Satan wants you scared, demons want you scared, because as long as you're scared, you're immobilized from faith. What happens is we have this idea that Satan is somehow on some form of an equal footing with the Father who is in heaven. And even if we don't say that, we certainly believe that by how our own works and how we operate. Many of us remain scared of demons. We believe that they have so much power over our lives. Now, granted, they have much power over the lives of people who aren't in Christ but, or people who are unrepentant. But people who have repented of their sin and who now belong to Christ given have given their lives to him. But instead, what I always like to say is demons are scared of us. We're not scared of them. Now, I want to read to you a post that I found on the Internet of. And this is really a common theme where people are warning against demons, against backlash, when believers are operating in prayer, when they are praying for or against certain things, when they're casting out demons themselves, basically, whenever believers are busy in any kind of a offensive or even defensive spiritual act, they need to be very careful as to these spiritual forces coming to attack them. Now, let me read it and then we'll comment on that. I'm not sure if everyone is aware that every time you do deliverance or finish working on personal deliverance, it is important to ensure you seal off the work that was done. Here is a sample prayer for everyone that may need it. Now, let's read the prayer, the sealing of prayer, as they call it. I now seal off everything that I released with the blood of Yeshua. And I petition, Father, that you will not allow any backlash, whiplash, judgment or punishment due to this prayer in the name of Yeshua. We decree and declare that the kingdom of darkness will no longer be able to visit, oversee, officiate, charge, avenge, deposit, punish or do harm to us because we are no longer under their protection. Now, I'm going to have to share some truths on all this. Please to understand that I'm doing so in love towards whoever wrote this. This is how it works. If someone is repentant, if someone has given their life to Christ, they have renounced all uh, sins, demonic covenants they've made or any such thing, any uh, witchcraft they have done and really whatever act of sin that they have committed that have caused a demon to have authority in their life because sin gives authority to demons. So if they've renounced that and they've given their life to Christ, that is it. That is the authority for God to protect us. 
Let's read on. I cover and seal the moment of this renunciation and all of my timelines with your heavenly gold. I decree it is locked down and blocked from all tampering and resets by heavenly protection. Now, first off, there is no tampering with my prayers. There is no resetting my prayers when I cut off any past things that I may have done, when I renounce anything I may have done, when I repent of my sins. Like Satan can't undo that. Satan can't tamper with that. Satan can't do anything. What the only thing can happen is I can be tempted and I can sin again. I can return to my own vomit like a dog who returns to his own vomit after repenting. And so, brothers and sisters, see this whole this the wording that's even being used here that that Satan can tamper or reset with with heavenly protection. No, we can tamper with the protection by moving out of alignment with God by sinning against him. Let's read on. I close every unholy door known and unknown, seen and unseen, and call them completely sealed from this point in time and out of time, forward and backward and in every direction, inside out, upside down, back, forth, reversed, inverted, vortex in Yeshua's name. Okay. Now, look, there's nothing wrong per se with with saying I want to close doors, right? God help me to see the doors that are open in my life so I might close it, uh, so I may not sin, so I might repent of sin. That's fine. This is what people don't understand is that the words that you use in your prayers is actually way less important than your faith and what you desire by the Holy Spirit expressing those desires. Now, to say that I wanted reversed, inverted vortex in Yeshua's name, that means absolutely nothing. It's not going to accomplish anything. That is not going to change anything. That's not going to suddenly make Satan be like, whoa, he vortexed the prayer. Like, I now I can't do anything. Like, that's not how any of this works. God is not like the pagan gods who is amazed by the many long and complicated words, because sometimes when we think about all of this in this manner, what it does is it communicates that it is necessary for someone to pray in this manner in order to receive protection from God. And see, this is where all of this is really coming down to is that in deliverance ministry, and this is May I dare say why many deliverance ministry activities have gotten such a bad rap in the Christian world even. Yes, some of it is unfounded, but some of it is because sometimes we've gone and we've made up a whole bunch of, whole bunch of stuff that's not biblical. It's not in the Bible. And, and even if it's not sin, and it's not necessarily evil. It certainly is unnecessary and it causes confusion and it puts up burdens because now we're like, well, if you've got the prayer, if you've got the right prayers, then you'll be fine. Like prayer is wonderful. Prayer is powerful. God wants us to pray. But when it becomes this thing where, well, I need to get this, that, and that prayer and, and this and that, and I need to pray this protection against this, this certain spirit with that and that name and this spirit the other day. And, and I need to, no, when this is being taught, because remember, I'm this is a teaching I'm dissecting here. When people are teaching, this is how you pray. It's like, well, free, what if I didn't vortex my prayers? Is God not going to hear me? Let's read on. I render this work established in all infinities and infinities and beyond, eternities and eternities and beyond, and time wheels that exist once existed and could or could not exist and everything in between on all sides of creation and in all multiverses like like this is the top of stuff we're praying guys like like first of time wheels not biblical second of all like when did Yeshua pray that this what his prayer should be established in all multi multiverses and eternities and like we don't need to pray this way. Yeshua did not warn us to pray backlash prayers nor did any of his disciples for a variety of reasons, of course. I don't believe the strategy and mindset is healthy because if I had to have every prayer right down, recited to feel safe and protected, 
I lack the understanding and faith to do responsible deliverance in the first place. Knowing who you are in Yeshua is what protects you, not the concern against backlash and having all your prayers against backlash in order. Demons want you thinking and being concerned about backlash. If I think of backlash, I personally, honestly, I just laugh inside. Like, what is Satan going to do, guys? Like, honestly, I think Satan, get behind me. And that's that. In fact, in my personal life, I don't just about ever think about backlash. I'm not scared of backlash. I'm not worried about Satan coming to come against me because I know my God is greater and he who's in me is greater than the he who's in the world. Satan's already defeated. Why do we act like he's not? The truth is demons are afraid of us when we know who we are in Christ. It's really way more simple than any of this and how we make it out to be. No complicated prayer needed. Just do it like Yeshua. Have faith. Don't fear. Pray and fast in preparation for any deliverance or anything like that that you believe you're going to be doing. And just go and cast them out on boldness. Let the oppressed renounce their past sin. Don't worry about getting every pretty and spiritual sounding prayer right, especially when they come from a place of fear of backlash. Fear God instead, then there's no need to fear backlash. Now, I understand many in deliverance ministry may not agree with me and how I think about this, but this is simply what I have observed in the life of Yeshua, his disciples, and how imitating his life has meant that I, even despite casting out many demons, even despite praying for the sick and all of these things, yes, there are mild irritations that often occur when we're busy setting up a big event or like there are definitely attacks of the enemy that we can see. However, that's not something I fear, think about or feel like I need to get in with complicated prayers about. And so I'm grateful that the biblical example remains simple. Demons do bother those who are constantly in fear of backlash. I mean, it's a guarantee. It's because of a lack of faith in Yeshua and because you consider Satan as powerful as you do. Take my word and the love I'm delivering it to you guys in the, the desire to see God's people empowered, never fearing evil, never fearing Satan, but seeing Satan and his demons as those who are of the defeated kingdom. Father, I pray, Lord, for everyone who is listening to this right now, Lord, I pray, Lord, for any lie of the enemy who's trying to come and put fear in us, fear in the hearts of our children. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for the boldness of your Holy Spirit be placed on everyone who's listening to this right now. And they can move forward in faith, not in fear, and just move mountains as you said they would do. Father, I thank you for that faith of a mustard seed that you plant in every heart listening to this. And Lord, I thank you, God, that Satan is behind us. I thank you've put him under our feet. And I thank you, Lord, that we don't have to fear him. In the name of Yeshua, I pray all this. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. I want to say a special thank you to all of our partners who've made this teaching and every other teaching this month possible. We love you guys. Can't wait to see you in the next one.